The debate regarding aliens and UFOs has been raging in scientific circles and the public for many years. Are there aliens living on other planets? If yes, are they interested in U.S. Earthlings? Do aliens use advanced spacecraft, or what we call UFOs, to visit the Earth? On the one hand, there's growing speculation around the presence of alien life and UFO sightings. On the other hand, NASA, the military, and the government are bent on dismissing all spotted unidentified flying objects as nothing extraordinary. So, who do we believe? Here's a story that will help you decide which side is telling the truth. It's the story of Ingo Swan, a brilliant American psychic artist and writer who had a unique gift of projecting his consciousness to remote locations anywhere in the universe. Get ready as we reveal his chilling stories that will blow your mind. Ingo Swan is best known as the pioneer in the field of remote viewing. His high success rate landed him at the center of many experiments at the Stanford Research Institute. It even allowed him to remote view Jupiter, revealing details that no one knew or had observed before. But there was another project that Swan worked on, a top secret project that he wasn't allowed to discuss with anyone. It was the CIA Stargate project, where he was assigned to view specific moon locations. But what he saw both excited and scared him, and a new truth dawned on him. We are not alone in the universe. Aliens are real, and they could be hostile. And the CIA knows about everything, but continues to hide aliens' existence from the general public. Swan was born high in the Rocky Mountains in Telluride, Colorado, on September 14, 1933. Recalling his childhood, Swan would fondly remember the clear blue skies of his surroundings, where he would see the Milky Way each night. Swan was an ordinary kid until he first experienced leaving his body at the age of three during an operation to remove his tonsils. At the same time, he began viewing butterfly lights around people, plants, and some animals. He later learned that he could view the auras around living creatures. By the age of nine, Swan had remotely traveled to the Milky Way, a remarkable feat for a nine-year-old. However, nothing prepared him for what he saw many years later on the moon and, believe it or not, our planet. Swan knew his experiences were anything but ordinary. Therefore, he penned down the things he had seen with his eyes and consciousness. One of his books, Penetration, The Question of Extraterrestrial and Human Telepathy, is a real page-turner. But before we reveal the astonishing truth Swan discussed in his books, it's important to understand how it all began. Swan first became involved in parapsychology in 1969, and the events mentioned in his book Penetration occurred in the 1970s. Swan was working with Harold Puthoff and Russell Targ at Stanford Research Institute at that time, doing remote viewing experiments. When his team was asked about their thoughts on the book, Puthoff replied, Although I do nor have independent verification of the events described, I can state that Ingo's commitment to truth was a keystone of his personality, so I have no reason to dismiss. However, Targ believed that penetration was a work of fiction. Ingo Swan was committed to the truth, and his credibility as a psychic was of utmost importance to him. His desire to safeguard and validate his skill isn't surprising, as he was partaking in remote viewing at a time when many people claiming to be psychics were raising questions about the legitimacy of this unique ability. When Ingo Swan was first asked to project his consciousness to the planet Jupiter, he refused to become a part of the experiment on the premise that there was no way to validate what he saw. However, when he was assured that the space probe pioneer was on its way to the gas giant to make crucial observations, Swan agreed to the assignment. Swan made several observations about Jupiter, including hydrogen mantle rotating storms like cyclones, high infrared readings, ice crystals in the atmosphere, and the color of the clouds. NASA's Pioneer probe confirmed all of Swan's statements except for one, which was later proved correct when Voyager passed Jupiter in 1979. Swan had seen a ring around Jupiter, similar to Saturn's ring. This was a feature that no one had deduced before, and it wasn't noted by any space probe that flew by Jupiter either. But Swan distinctly saw a ring around Jupiter made of dust and tiny asteroids. After Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 failed to observe anything that matched Swan's description, a breakthrough appeared when Voyager 1 detected an unusual, never-before-seen ring around the planet. Ingo Swan was an exceptional psychic, and it wasn't long until other powerful people noticed him. We are talking about the CIA, who hired Swan for a unique mission. 
Swan's book Penetration gives readers a detailed account of how he was covertly approached and hired for a project that would change his life forever. His assignment was to subject his consciousness to the moon and visit specific locations. Expecting to see regular moon features such as large cliffs, craters, and dunes of white powder, Swan was stunned to find visible signs of life and activity on the lunar surface. He saw tracks on the moon that could only be created by machinery like tractors. And then there were patterns that could only be made by the wind. This discovery was surprising because it was believed the moon had no atmosphere. But here's a mind-blowing observation he had never expected. Swan saw a peculiar structure in one location with dome-shaped windows. He could see different colored lights emanating from inside it. Curious to see where the light originated, Swan approached the window and was shocked to find people inside the building, only they weren't humans. The humanoid figures were completely naked and looked busy as if they were working on something. And suddenly, without warning, all the aliens turned toward the window Swan had projected his consciousness through. The aliens were psychic, just like him. This revelation left him speechless and scared. He could feel that he had led himself into a hostile and dangerous situation, but before anything happened, he was asked to pull out of that location immediately. When Swan questioned the CIA operatives he was working with regarding the aliens' psychic abilities, they replied that they already knew what they were capable of. However, they had no conclusive evidence that they could kill a spying psychic. Swan was obviously shaken after remote viewing alien bases on the moon, and he took two days to recover from it. But during that time, he made sketches of what he remembered having seen on the moon. Interestingly, he added the sketches to his book, Penetration. Ingo Swan thought that would probably be the last time he would see aliens, but he was wrong. Six months after his moon assignment, Swan was grocery shopping at a supermarket when he spotted a remarkable woman. He described her in his book as one of the most beautiful women he had seen. She stood out from the crowd because she was hardly wearing anything. She was dressed in the briefest of halters of pink with big yellow polka dots. Beneath that were short shorts, so short that they barely existed. There was something unusual about her, and Swan immediately felt an electrifying wave of goosebumps throughout his body. He had the strongest feeling that she wasn't human, but an alien disguised as one of us. Remembering how he felt when she came close, Swan wrote, The hair on my arms practically stood at attention, and the hair on my neck definitely did. My throat went dry. My hands started shaking. After a while, he noticed two men who were clearly there to observe her. They looked as if they belonged to the military, but as Swan focused on their faces, he realized they were the same men who hired him for the moon assignment. One of them later called Swan to ask him about his opinion of the woman in the supermarket and confessed that she was very dangerous. A few days after the supermarket incident, Swan was whisked away by the CIA operatives on another adventure. He was taken to a remote location in Alaska where he trekked to the edge of a lake and waited patiently. But waiting for what? Swan had the same question, but the only answer he got was that they needed to remain as quiet and still as possible. And as they observed in complete silence, an unbelievable scene unfolded in front of Swan's eyes. At first, he saw fog rising from the lake, but it was quickly joined by a neon blue light emanating from its depths. As we watched, the light turned into an angry shade of purple while the fog grew thicker. Suddenly, a triangle-shaped craft emerged from the lake, about 90 feet wide and emitting a pulsing hum. Suddenly, beams of light were shooting from the craft, hitting various locations around the area. The operatives knew it was time to move, and they dragged the stunned swan from their hiding place, which was a lucky move as the light hit the exact spot where they were standing a few seconds ago. Swan remembered hearing a loud crack like lightning when the light hit the ground. They began running away from the craft. But Swan wanted to know more, and as he looked over his shoulder, he saw water from the lake being pulled into the craft. He described it as a reverse waterfall. Ingo Swan witnessed things others can only imagine. And while his experiences may sound like a work of fiction for some, it is important to remember that he had an indisputable reputation as a psychic and gave no one any reason to question his observations. What do you think about Swan's stories? Do you believe him? Let us know your opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell for more exciting space videos. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.